Hello. Today we shall study experiment number 7 of Applied Physics course UPS004. The title of this experiment is Beam Divergence of Helium Neon Laser and Diode Laser. In this video lab, I am going to explain how to find the beam divergence of laser. We will also compare the scene for two lasers namely Helium Neon Laser and Diode Laser. I am Dr. Prabhat Pratap Singh Vadaria and this video is made with help of Mr. Manjit Singh. This will be the outline of the video lab. In introduction, we will talk about what is laser, what is beam divergence of a light beam, importance of beam divergence and about diffraction limited sources. This will be followed by detail about experimental setup, methodology, procedure of the experiment and the precautions. In the apparatus, we will use the laser sources, in which two laser sources for helium neon laser and diode laser will be used. A sliding bench with measuring marks is required, graph paper for spot size measurement and the photo detector will be used. Firstly, in introduction, we will talk about what is a laser. Laser is short form for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Let us understand how it is produced. Its production is little bit different than an ordinary light. It uses the stimulated emission. Where in case of an ordinary light, the photons are emitted when in an atom an electron jumps to ground state from any excited state. This is called spontaneous emission. But in case of laser, if a photon is allowed to incident on an atom during the time it is in its excited state, the emitted photon by the atom moves with the incident photon. The direction of propagation, the phase and the energy of the emitted photon is exactly same as that of incident photon. Here this is incident photon which hits this atom when the electron in its excited state is about to jump to the ground state. Then the emitted photon goes with the incident photon and the direction of propagation, energy as well as the phase of this photon is exactly same as that of incident photon. This process is known as stimulated emission. The result is an enhanced beam of coherent and collimated light. The stimulated emission is not limited to light only. For microwave, it gives measure. We are not going to study the measure here. Along with vast range of laser power, they are highly collimated and have single wavelength. These properties bring them the importance in many areas like material processing, industry, medical and research. It is necessary to know the laser beam divergence to use it for any application like eye surgery or welding or distance measurement. And therefore, for those who need to take control of their laser spot size, the laser beam divergence is an important parameter. Let us know more about divergence or collimation of the light beam. The photons emitted by stimulated emission move together so that there is no divergence by principle. But the laser light has to come out of the laser cavity through a finite width opening and therefore it suffers diffraction. So in principle it must be like this. Every photon is going in the same direction with same phase and wavelength. But it has divergence due to diffraction. The diffraction is the only cause behind the divergence of the laser. Such type of light sources whose divergence depends only upon the diffraction are known as diffraction limited sources. And the laser is one example of that. Divergence is defined as the angular measure of how the beam diameter increases with the distance from the laser aperture. So simply divergence is defined as the angle at which the beam expands. Here you can see example of how a beam expands due to divergence. The divergence angle or diffraction angle of a laser is defined as tan theta equal to lambda by pi d. Here theta is divergence angle, lambda is its wavelength and d is the aperture width. So the divergence of laser is directly proportional to its wavelength 
and it is inversely proportional to the laser opening. The smaller laser opening causes a greater divergence. And here is the example. A laser with its opening 2 mm has less divergence angle than that for opening half mm. So, what do you need to find the divergence of a laser beam? You need its wavelength and aperture diameter for the calculation. But it is not easy task to know them. Hmm? In this experiment, we follow a rather easy method to find the divergence of the laser. It requires the geometrical calculations. So let us start. It is the laser source with a finite opening. When the laser emerges from it, it diverges. You see that at different distances, the beam diameters are different. From the center of aperture, we draw straight lines which run with the same divergence as that of the beam. Now, the divergence angle is this, theta. To find divergence angle, let us find the diameter d1 of the laser spot at distance l1 from the aperture. Also, find the diameter d2 of the laser spot at distance l2 from the aperture. Now, this angle must be the half of divergence angle, theta by 2. To find this angle, consider this right angle triangle. You will be agree that this length is half of the difference between d1 and d2. And this length is equal to the difference between L1 and L2. Now, divergence angle can simply be given using this formula. Then theta by 2 equal to D2 minus D1 divided by twice of L2 minus L1. Isn't it simple to find divergence angle of a laser source? Let's find in next slides the experimental setup and the procedure following this formula. In the lab, you will have helium nail laser and a dive laser. A dive laser has a separate device to control its current. To measure the diameters D1 and D2 of the laser spots, a graph paper is also required. We put the laser and a stand carrying the graph paper on an optical bench with measuring marks over it. This is the optical bench with the measuring marks over it. This is helium nail laser. And this is the graph paper. One can slide the graph paper on the bench so that diameter of laser spot can be measured on different distances L1 and L2 from the laser source. Now we are ready to measure D1, D2, L1 and L2 to put in governing formula, this. Our instrument is ready with helium nail laser for start and a graph paper on sliding bench. Before the demo, let us see how spot diameter is measured. When you start the source, the laser will illuminate the graph. And this is the laser spot. Let us see it more closely. So this is laser spot. Now, using a pencil, mark the periphery of the laser beam spot. Like this. Once you have drawn a circle around the beam spot, switch off the laser. Now, you have a circular pencil mark on the graph paper. To measure its diameter, you need to measure its vertical and horizontal spans, like this. Just find the average of these lengths to find diameter of the laser beam. This is D1 at a given distance L1 from the laser. So now, let us go for the demo. Very first, choose the distance L1 from the laser. Slide the stand for graph to put it at this distance. You will see laser spot on the graph. Find D1 as described before. Now change the distance L2 of the graph paper from the laser. You can choose second optical bench placed adjacent to the first. At this place also find D2. You can find spot diameters Ds at as many as. Now you have done it for helium nail laser. The same procedure is to be repeated for diode laser. To change the diode, first switch off the helium nail laser and then put diode laser on the sliding bench. For diode laser, you have a separate device to control current through it. Connect it and 
start it. And now you find D1 and D2 at L1 and L2 distances from that laser diode also. Now you are done with measuring D1, D2 and L1 and L2 for helium nail laser as well as for diode laser. The formula described previously is sufficient now to calculate the values of divergence angles for the lasers. You can also check the laser sources for the intensity of the beam. For this, you need a photo detector. When the light hits the detector, it produces the EMF or voltage across its terminals. A highly intense light produces a high voltage. So the photo detector gives the intensity of the light in terms of volts. So let us start. This is the photo detector and the laser is entering its hole. And this is giving this value of the intensity of the light. And you can measure the distance L of the detector from the laser source. For this, you need to be ensure that the laser source is at zero mark. You can change the distance and measure the intensity of the light. And that's all. You can do it for helium nail laser and diode laser both and you can compare the intensities. You will see that as you increase the distance of the detector from the laser source, the intensity will decrease. So this is the whole procedure of the experiment. Now at last we talk about the precautions and sources of error in this experiment. We are dealing with laser and laser is harmful. So you need to be careful in the experiment. You need to avoid the direct exposure of body parts to the laser beam. Although the laser power is very small, yet a long time exposure can harm the tissues of the eyes. Secondly, do not run the source of helium nail laser unnecessarily because the life of the tube filled with helium and neon gases is not infinite practically. Secondly, in the marking of the spot diameter. While marking the graph paper for the beam diameter, you need to be very careful as your hands and eyes can be exposed to the laser beam. And the pencil mark must be at the periphery of the laser beam. It must not be very inward or outward of the beam. Now, while measuring intensity of the laser beam, the laser light must enter in the photo detector without hitting its walls because reflection of laser from the detector walls will change the measured value of the intensity. And while moving the photo detector on the sliding bench, you need to be ensured that the laser beam is entering in the detector hole. It's all for this experiment and all the best for the lab.